Hi, Cowboy T back, San Francisco liberal with a gun. In this segment, we're going to talk about cast bullets, cast lead bullets, those things that we made some time ago. But specifically, we're going to talk about hardness testing. Now, why do we care about hardness testing? Well, the reason we care about that is because we need to know just how strong the bullet is once we get through casting it, how strong our alloy is, so we know what kind of pressure we can put behind that, that bullet. Uh, see, if we put too much pressure behind it, uh, we get leading and accuracy suffers and all you know other bad things. And you're, you're you're sitting there cleaning your gun forever. Uh, if we put too little behind it, that's not quite as critical, but you can still get some leading from something called gas cutting. Uh, the uh, you really want to make sure that your that your cast bullets, since we're casting them anyway, might as well make them at the optimal hardness for the load that we want to use for them. For example, for my powder puff load for 38 special. I use a very, um, I use a relatively soft um, bullet. I use a relatively soft alloy. For my magnum loads, I use something much harder, something much stronger, and I don't get leading. So this is good. Oh, and my accuracy is really good too. You can just ask Miss BHC. She's tried them both. <laughs> um, so this is what we're going to talk about. Um, up until recently, there really wasn't a, a good, affordable way for us mere mortals to test hardness. Well, now there is, thanks to Lee Precision. Here's the kit. <clears throat> it's right over here. This is called the Lee Hardness Testing Kit. This thing. Okay? It's about 50 bucks over at stores like Midway USA, maybe 55 at Cabela's or wherever other, other uh, whatever other gun store or reloading supply store that you happen to find. I find that it's well worth it. Uh, it doesn't look like much, but actually it is. Uh, it consists of basically three components. You've got the the ball indenter which is this thing. You've got the 20 power optical pocket microscope which is this thing here. And you've got what they call, what Lee calls a V-block cradle which is this here. It's Which is basically just a shell holder with a V-block instead of being shaped to hold a shell. That's all. <clears throat> I'll pull each piece out and show you what they look like. Show you what each looks like. Here's the 20 power microscope. Okay, it is just that. It shows um, inverted images as with all such devices. You look through this end and you notice this little cutout here. That's for light to shine through so you can actually see what it is you're looking at. That, that'll matter. Uh, when you try using this, you'll appreciate that. So here's the pocket microscope. This here is the um, the V-block cradle. I'll twist this so you can see it easily. Okay, notice, fits in a standard shell holder. Okay, what you do is you put the bullet, <clears throat> you, you put the bullet in here, and you file one side of it to make it flat so you can hardness test it. Um, I'll show you a way, an easier way to do that later. <clears throat> and this here, is the steel ball indenter. Doesn't it look like a die? Well, that's because it is. It's a specialized die. There's this little ball at the bottom there. You can see it. Okay? That's what actually indents the lead. Okay? And I'm going to twist this around and show you the other side. <clears throat> You'll notice a hole in the top. Okay? Well, when we push down on this, uh, uh, when we apply pressure to this, which you'll see how in a moment, there's a little uh, plunger in there that will pop up. You want that plunger to be perfectly level. You don't want it too high. You don't want to pop it up like you can make it look like a top hat. And you don't want it still down in there. I'll show you what that is. The process for using this thing is basically as follows. Uh, you screw it into a single stage press much like this one here. Okay. I love this little press. This is the $30 Lee Reloader single stage press that I've used a lot <clears throat> and will continue to use. You screw this thing Into, into here, like so. Okay, that's good enough. Finger tight is good enough. <clears throat> and then what you do is, normally, according to the directions, you would replace this number 11 shell holder, which I use for 45 Colt and 44 Special, <clears throat> with this little V-block version here. I'll show you how it pops right in. This comes out this pops in. Okay, and you would lay your bullet basically like that. 
and you'd file the top of it and such like that. I don't do it that way. Here's how I do it. I should go ahead and use a shell holder. <clears throat> and I'll show you with this bullet here. Notice the top or the plat of the bullet. It's flat and it's wide. This happens to be a, a wonderful bullet that I cast for, three, for 357 Magnum, occasionally for 38 Special as well. Um, I, instead of like bothering to f file this, I'm just going to do the bullet testing right on the top here, right on the plat. It'll go just like this. Okay? Now, observe the full motion here. Come up, 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 and notice now the ball is about to cut to top to touch the top of the bullet. Ah, we just touched. Now here's what we do. <clears throat> I'm gonna move. We're gonna pay close attention to this top thing right here. You're gonna see a plunger come up, and when it's perfectly flush, that's when I stop and I hold it for 30 seconds. Here we go. One, two, three. Here it comes, and one, one thousand, two, one thousand, thousand. I'm also going to. Uh, come across the top of my finger to feel that it's flush and we just hold it we're at 10 one thousand okay that's what we do and that's all there is to this <clears throat> you just hold it there for 30 seconds we got 10 more seconds to go and then we're going to take a look at the size of the hole you do not want this going above if you did you ruin it and you have to do it over again okay we just hit 30 seconds down we come and notice the bullet has a little dimple. You see that little dimple? Okay, here we'll bring this out and get you some better light so you can see the dimple. Okay, it's right at the top. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, there's the dimple. You see the dimple. It's right there. We're going to look at that. <clears throat> and we're going to get a picture that looks just like that. Just like this here. Okay? That's what the view looks like. That's what we're going to use to look at this. Okay? And I'll show you. Here we go. You may not be able to see much of this, but I'm going to aim this at the light so I can look through. This is going to be slightly tricky, because I have to be a little dexterous to do this. Okay, we have 0 0.48. <clears throat> okay. Here we go. Point okay, we have 0 0.048 inches. Now we're going to look at our chart here. We're going to see what 0 0.048 gets us, okay? Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Ah, right there. 0 0.048. And we just read across our BHN is 22.7, which means this bullet can take 32,356 psi. That means we want our load to be 10% below that, which is 29,120 PSI. And that's actually not far from where I uh, do my 357 Magnum anyway. So this bullet is very good for that. Okay, we've done it. And this <clears throat> is how you can easily test your, your alloy for proper hardness with the Lee, bullet, uh, <clears throat> Lee Hardness uh, Lead Tester. Uh, it's a great tool. Sometimes you get BHN 10 or 12. That one you want to use for your low pressure loads, like your 38 Specials. Uh, the one I just did, you want to use for your Magnum loads. Uh, this one will definitely go on my Magnum loads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cowboy T, signing off. Till next time. San Francisco Liberal. With a gun.